Welcome to this session on SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. My name is Ingo Hilgefort and I will be your host. Today we're going to take a look at a sample model that we're going to create in SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. So as you can see right now, our model will have a total of eight table. We will have sales orders. We will have sales details that are going to point to a table for product, product subcategory, and a product category. And also our sales orders will point to the table for a customer. And then from a customer, we will go to the table of city and salesperson. As part of the next couple of minutes, we will take a look how we can create these tables and how we can upload the data. So when you take a look at the next part, what questions are we trying to answer when we actually create the model and then build the analytics on top? So we're trying to find out what the total sales volume is by customer, by product. We're trying to find out who is our best salesperson. We're trying to find out which products are actually profitable, potentially which products are not profitable. We're trying to find out who's our best customer. So these are things we'll basically will try to actually answer as part of the next steps we're going to create. So we are in SAP Data Warehouse Cloud and we're going to start the process by going to the data builder. Remember last time we created the space, so we select the space and then we can start creating our first table. So our first table will be for the sales order header. So we can now actually fill out the properties such as the business name, the technical name. We can decide if this is like a relational data set, an analytical data set, or if this is details for a dimension. We can then also fill out the details for the business purpose, such as a description and some tags. And then we can start building the individual columns for our table. So when we start building the columns, you will see for each of the column, we can enter a business name, we can enter the technical name, and then we can choose the data type. So in our case, we start with the sales order number. We have the technical name suggested by the system, and we're going to choose an integer data type. And then we can fill out additional columns for this table. So the last item we're going to do is to decide that the sales order number is the key in the table. And after that, we can save the changes and deploy the table into the system. So we created the first table. So we're going to now go ahead and create our second table, which are the order details. So we're going to start by entering the name and the technical name and the details for the business purpose. And then we will enter the column details for the second table. So in this case, the table will contain the sales order number, but there will also be a line item number. So each order could have multiple items. Similar like before, as the last step, we're going to define the keys for the table. In this case, the sales order number and the line number. We're then saving our changes and then going to deploy the table to the system. As the third table, we're going to go and head and create the table for product. So we're going to start by entering the name and the technical name for the table product. But this time, in terms of type, we're going to change and configure the table as a dimension table. 
and we will see we then have a few additional options for the columns. So we're going to quickly enter the details for the business purpose. And then we're going to start entering the individual columns. So now you can see as part of the columns, we have the business name and the technical name. We have the data type, but we also have the notion of a semantic type where we can configure basically what kind of type of data this is. So as an example, currencies, measures, is it a text? Is it related to calendar dies, fiscal years? Is it geo information? So we will make use of this, for example, by entering the product description, configure the semantic type to be a text, and then we will use the description as a label column for the product ID so that later on as part of our dashboard, we can switch between the ID and the description. So here as well as the last step, we define the key for the table we save the changes and we deploy the table to the system. As part of this video, you will also receive a pointer to a PDF that includes all the information for all the tables. So at the point when you have created all the tables, your data builder will show eight objects. So now let's upload the information. So we select the sales header table and we go to upload the data from the ZSV. We choose the ZSV file. We have prepared for you one file per table. You will get a preview and you can do some configurations. Most important, you can map the columns of the ZSV file to the columns of the table and you can upload the information and then for example, use the preview to validate that all the information is there. So we're going to do the same thing for the order details. We go to upload, we choose the ZSV file, we will get the mapping dialog where we can map the ZSV file to the table, we choose import, we can use the preview to actually see the actual data in the table. Now we're going to do the same thing for our dimension product. We take the ZSV file and then you can see you have to map the short, the medium and the long descriptions. So you can simply open up the drop down list, point to the right column and then you can upload the information from the ZSV file to the table. Now as last step, we will go to the table for the salesperson. First, we will upload the information. So we choose the ZSV file, we map the columns, and we import the data. But now we also would like to create a hierarchy as part of this data set. You can see we have a salesperson and a sales manager in the data set. So we go to the hierarchy dialog, we choose to add a parent-child hierarchy in this case. We can enter the business name, we can enter the technical name, and then we can choose which one is the parent and which one is the child column. In our case, the parent is the sales manager and the child is the salesperson. We can then close the dialog and save our changes to the table and deploy it. So these are the items we want to do as part of this session. And next time we're going to start building the views. I want to say thank you for watching and listening.